What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm your host and the publisher of Pack Report, Ross Uglum, and as you can see, we're not in the studio today. Uh, Going to get a couple of these videos out before I head out to Arizona for my sister's wedding. Um, as you might be able to tell, still not quite healthy, but uh, better than I have been. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Certainly... Hope to be fully healthy by the draft and very excited to reiterate once again. Um, man, what what an unbelievable time to be in Green Bay, Wisconsin for the NFL draft. Thursday night, the Lyric Room, Cheesehead TV draft party. Friday afternoon, Pack-A-Day podcast, happy hour with Andy Herman at Badger State Brewing. And then uh, we'll do the Packer Report draft party for picks 41, 58, 88, 91, all on Friday night at Badger State. Going to be absolutely unbelievable. Um, but what a weekend. And, and obviously, you know, hashtag no free ads. We gave a little free ad there for the guys over at She Said TV. Um, should be an unbelievable experience. Very excited. Uh, today, we are going to discuss another linebacker, and that is Michigan's junior Colson. Uh, Colson had some, like, hand issues and ultimately didn't do basically, like, any of the testing. I'm just going to do a quick adjustment here. And that's, that's fine. I mean, you know, we don't know, we don't know that'll be on the the kind of the cons portion of things, but uh, ultimately like exactly what you think of when you just think of a good linebacker. And I don't mean that in, in like, great, I mean, good. Uh, And, and that'll, you know, be, I guess part of sort of be part of the, the, the cons as well. But Colson to me is such a high floor prospect and is just like, he's going to be a good player. And I know that's terrible analysis or, or it sounds probably very dumb, but I hope you guys are understanding what I'm trying to convey, like high floor, potentially maybe a low ceiling, but just, Hey, we want our mic to be like super sound. And I think that, that, that has a chance really to be junior Colson uh, prototype size. And I don't mean like Tremaine Edmonds where he's, you know, six, four long arms, uh freak of nature. So I mean like prototype, like, what you would like to normally see in a linebacker. So um, 69th percentile height, 47th percentile weight. Like he is the prototype. He is what a linebacker in today's NFL looks like. Um, 53rd percentile wingspan, but junior Colson is what, uh, uh, you know, not 80th percentile wingspan. Like I said, he's not Tremaine Edmonds or, you know, whatever you're trying to think of, for, of like this, you know, uh, space alien but he he's just like a solidly above average in everything and he is as i mentioned the prototype um unbelievably strong tackler that that is something that you watch on film that is something that you can see uh when we're talking about just basic like box score numbers when you're looking at pff stuff uh 12 total missed tackles in almost 1400 snaps over the last two years And that is, by the way, against 196 total tackles in those two years. So 196 tackles made, 12 tackles missed. He simply does not miss tackles. That is something that I I feel like would just be so welcomed in Green Bay after, you know, what we've seen from uh, middle of the field defenders, whether they're safeties, whether they're linebackers, whatever. And actually, Quay has been a really solid tackler, especially last year. Um, Quay's issues are not necessarily getting guys on the ground. With that said, Colson is even another level above Quay. Um, he just an unbelievable tackler, very smooth mover. Uh, and, and I think, you know, you might maybe wish he was a little bit more twitched up or a little bit more athletic, a little more splashy. Everything he does is just so smooth. And I, I it's in the pros part. I mean, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm paying him a compliment when I say that, um, but very violent, very physical, very strong, both in the run and pass game. Uh, imposes his will quite a bit. Big arms, big hands, strong body, strong football player. Very instinctual football player. Um, I don't know that he would have – if I had to put a RAS number on him, just like we don't have any testing data. Ross, what do you think? 7.25, 7.5? slightly above what the new average is. Cause I think if you're a five RAS guy now, it's like, well, you're probably a sub sub optimal athlete because you know, this data is based on so many years ago. 
So I would say an average athlete now is probably like a six two five six. I think seven seven five for Junior Colson. Um, but that is enhanced by unbelievable instincts. And I, 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 for, I specifically mean that in the run game. Uh, just does an unbelievable job of getting to the spots that he needs to get to. Reads things quickly, reads offensive linemen well. Um, very seldom fooled on read option. Very seldom fooled on counters. Very seldom. Um, yeah, I, I just – he – he is a very, 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 very smart football player. And I think some of that probably goes to some good coaching at Michigan as well. Um, he, again, play strength, very impressive. Um, one of the few guys in this class, you know, we talk about like a Cedric Gray, even talk about kind of like the thinner frame of a Peyton Wilson. Junior Colson can take on blocks. And it's not everybody that can do that anymore at the off-ball linebacker position. Um, you, you know, you start getting these 218-pound, 223-pound guys, and that's not Colson, but I just mean in general, um, you know, everybody wants pass-down guys, pass-down guys, pass-down guys. And if you're going to play them for three downs, well, then your pass-down guys, it's like, well, we want you to defend the run, but it's going to be a lot of beating offensive linemen to spots or making a miss. We understand that if we're going to play a safety convert, like for the Dallas Cowboys – we're going to play Keanu Neal at linebacker. We need to understand that Keanu Neal is not taking on a guard or a fullback. Keanu Neal is going to try and run around them. And that's sort of part of the calculus when uh, you're, you're watching Junior Colson is like, that's, he can play linebacker. Like you used to have to play linebacker where you stack and shed blocks, where you take on guards, where you take on fullbacks, where you take on, you know, tight ends. He, he can take on blocks and beat them. Uh, which is not the case for every linebacker in this class. Takes very good angles, um, and that that goes back to, I think, his instinctiveness, right? Um, both coming downhill and in pursuit. Uh, just a really, really smart football player. I keep saying that, but I want I want that to sink in with you guys. Um, and it, it, it appears to have adequate twitch and long speed, but, and now we're getting right into the cons, we don't know what we don't know. Um, no testing, so... Uh, you know, he, he is whatever athlete you see on film and that's fine. Right. But, um, you know, the Packers and, and every NFL team, uh, wants to have as much information as possible, not as little. Uh, that's why the combine exists. That's why pro days exist. That's why all these guys do all these things. Uh, it would be better if we knew more about junior Colson than less. That's very simple. Ball production and splash plays are not at a high level. That's what I, when I talk about junior Colson as being a player with a high floor and a low ceiling, some of the things that I'm talking about um, ball production, for example, or, or, you know, we're talking about like box score stuff, eight and a half tackles for loss. This guy that played a lot of football, by the way. So understand that these numbers are not impressive. This is a guy that's played a lot of football, eight and a half tackles for loss, two and a half snap, sacks, excuse me, zero picks, five pass breakups, zero force fumbles. Um, kind of the anti Cedric Gray, frankly. When I talk about Junior Colson being super solid, it's sort of also a backhanded compliment, and that's why we're in the cons now. Because the the ball production, the turnover production, tackles for loss, impact plays, almost non-existent. And that is, I mean, has to go in the con portion. Has to. Um, can get overconfident in taking on those blockers. I talked about his ability to take on blocks in a way that not everyone can. You can get overconfident on that. Take on offensive linemen in their chest instead of trying to work half a man or make a guy miss. You can't make every blocker miss, especially sometimes you jump out of the way, create a big gap, leave your safety out to dry. You've seen that when the Packers have failed in, in defending the run at times, especially when they're playing down a gap in a Joe Barry-style defense. Um, but Junior Colson, you know, I don't know if he's going to be able to take on Tevin Jenkins of the Bears in his chest. Take on Darnell Wright in his chest. You know, you might want to take on a Zach Martin of the Dallas Cowboys in his chest. He's got to work on working half a man, got to work on being a little bit smarter and not just trying to run through everybody. Um, ultimately, on the last con here, can he be anything more than a solid football player? And if solid football player is what his ceiling is, then we have to have the conversation of like, 
what's that worth? What pick is that worth? And then we also have to marry what's that worth with uh, scarcity of the resource. How many decent linebackers are in this class to go with the fact that there's also no decent linebackers left in free agency? Junior Colson has to be treated as a scarce resource. Packers fit. Very ideal, except we don't know the testing. And the Packers have been kind of weird about that stuff sometimes too. Um, they They have not had, in my opinion – like super rigid testing stuff with linebackers in the same way that they have had with other positions. Um, you know, they're, they're super specific with what they do at wide receiver. They're super specific with what they do at cornerback. Um, they've been very specific with that. They've done on the offensive line, both on the interior and at tackle, and then very specific what they've done with pass rusher too. linebackers have been kind of a missed bag. Um, I was trying to pull up some stuff. Raz football's taking a while to, to, to go uh, load up here, but I remember, for example, um, and here we go now, you know, Green Bay, and I know A.J. Hawk was a freak, right? That's what happens when you take a top, uh, take a linebacker in the top five like that. Um, Oren Burks was a super freak. Ty Summers was a super freak. Quay's a freak. But then you go to some other guys that they've actually played off the ball. Jake, Jake Ryan was a good athlete. But Isaiah McDuffie was was okay. Um, Blake Martinez was okay. Desmond Bishop was okay. Sam Barrington, Abdul Hodge, Terrell Manning, all kind of even a little bit less than okay. And, you know, a lot of these guys are saying, well, Ross, these are players where you talk about the Packers starting to, you know, get off of their preferences. And that is true. You know, but you think of where like Blake Martinez and Jake Ryan were taken, they were taken to be starters because up until Quay, basically, honestly, between AJ Hawk in 2006 and Quay Walker in 2022, it's all mid to late round guys. Oren Burke's third round, Ty Summers, seventh round, um, Brad Jones and Nate Palmer, late, basically, edge guys that got moved inside. Jake Ryan, I think, fourth round, Isaiah McDuffie, sixth round. Um, Blake Martinez, fourth or fifth round. Desmond Bishop was a mid-round guy, uh, I think. Sam Barrington was a late-round guy. Abdul Hodge, I think, was kind of a high pick. But that's in that same 2006 draft with A.J. Hawk. They've taken guys in the mid-round that they expect to start because they've, they devalued the position for such a long time. Um, and now they're not uh, paying Devondre Campbell a bunch of money and spending a high pick on Quay Walker and – honestly ending up with one of the worst linebacker core in the league by spending a bunch of money, which is not great. Okay. Um, so anyway, can play the mic position, can wear the green dot, does different things well than Quay Walker. They're very different players. Immediately the best tackler, tackler in the linebacker room and maybe the best tackler on the defense. Will Green Bay care that he hasn't done any testing? That's the last note of the Packers fit. Overall, he's got a second round grade, not a high second, but he's got a second round grade for me. Um, Overall, he's player number 61, and he's in a clump with Peyton Wilson and Edge Cooper, clearly ahead of Cedric Gray, who is then clearly ahead of a bunch of guys, and I've talked about that before. Uh, how can you help us out? Guys, the draft guide's live. Buy it. Um, setting a personal goal. I think we're at 750 guides sold right now. Setting a personal goal of 1,000 guides. That'd be really, really cool, um, and a great way to support me, my writers at Packer Report, um, my kids, <laughs> right? <laughs> excuse me i thought i'd make it through this whole video without coffee I, I apologize um you know my kids who if i don't make it through the other side of the sickness might be without a father keep that in mind by the guide no but seriously uh by the guide check us out over at packer report we should be running some specials during draft week too um and 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 swing on by go to the the cheese head tv deal um at the lyric room and then friday night come on over Pack a day podcast, 4.30. Happy hour with Andy Herman. 5.30, excuse me, 4 o'clock, I think. 4 o'clock on that, not 4.30. Uh, 5.30 to the end of the night, Pack Report Draft Guide. Uh, excuse me, Pack Report Draft Party with me. Pick 41, pick 58, pick 88, pick 91. Uh, should be super fun. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Go Pack Go.